All right. This week on Camera Talk, we are going to pay a little visit to the German Democratic Republic. And Pentacon 135 F 2.8. 2.8 doesn't seem all that fast, does it? Hey, but for a lens like this, it's plenty fast enough because it's uh, kind of the next generation of what would have been a Meyer Optic Gerlitz 135 3.5. So why don't we find out a little bit about this lens together, right? So let's get it on. Here I am. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. That's right, we are back again for another episode of Camera Talk. And this week we're uh, going to visit the Fatherland, the German Democratic Republic. Uh, otherwise known as East Germany way back in the day. Um, you know, this is a... Uh, this is, uh, a Pentacon 135 millimeter f 2.8 and um, it's got its its fan base that's for sure it's uh, it's got a reputation as a king of Boca it's good to be the king that's right king of Boca do you know what Boca is is it like a kingdom or something a far far away land no it's the quality of that out of focus background rich smooth buttery Boca and, uh, you know, just a quickie thing, you know, what is Pentacon? Uh, if you watched earlier episodes of Camera Talk, you'll know that uh, we went through the history of Pentacon. It's a, it was kind of a conglomerate of a bunch of camera companies that were merged together uh, by the East German government, figuring it's easier to control one than a bunch of companies. And um, so Pentacon, where'd the name come from? Well, if you do a cross-section of the prism within a, an SLR camera, uh, you'll see it's got a pentagonal shape to it. So they got the penta from that. And then, you know, they've also merged in uh, Zeiss's contact um, line. So pentacon, con from contact, so pentacon. And between 1959 and 1968 is when these merges were all happening uh, in Dresden, Germany. And, um, well, you know, early on, uh, this particular lens uh, shared factory space with Carl Zeiss in, uh, in the town of Jena. Um, so there's some Carl Zeiss-ish mojo going on with, uh, with this lens. <laughs> Um, it's a pretty cool lens. I mean, one of the things that caught my eye right off the bat was, uh, you know, a 135 is a 135 is a 135. They're all over the place, right? Yeah, there's some pretty famous ones everywhere. But this baby had 15 bokeh blades. Ah. Woo. The later version had six. You know, just again, like a lot of other companies out there, they do six, six, you know, uh, aperture blades. But this one had 15. Uh, so that caught my eye. Did it catch yours? Also, the, the aperture range uh, goes from 2.8 to uh, 32. Get the fuck out of here. You know, uh, my Leica cameras, you know, go to 16. The average goes to, to 22. Well, this one goes to 32. Uh, so again, it's something a little different. Uh, construction, it's a, it's a hefty sucker. I mean, this has got a nickname uh, of the hand grenade. Uh, it's like a, oh sure, just fart on my leg, you nasty little man, you. Who plays game? Uh, it's like a brick. I mean, you can, you could use this thing for self-defense, um, or for breaking windows. You know, if you're a, a criminal who's going to throw a brick through a window, whew, smash, smash and grab, as they say. So this is, again, it, it's hefty. Um, you know, run through the specs on this real quick. It's five elements in four groups, five elements in four groups. Um, 
Its close focus distance is 150 centimeters or 1.5 meters. And again, the later version of this, uh, that six bladed one, uh, has even longer. It's 170, so 1.7 meters. Uh, it has 15 blades, told you already. Um, very bocalicious, as they say, nice rounded uh, bokeh balls all the way from 2.8 to F32. And again, it's heavy, 470. Um, 470, I was going to say kilos, 470 grams, which is about the same as the, uh, um, my 50.95 here on, on my, uh, my M10. So again, it's, it's got some weight to it. So you don't want to be carrying this around with you all day, especially strapped around your neck. Um, it's going to, you're going to feel it, right? What's it famous for? Boca, baby, right? King of the Boca. It's got to be the king. It's famous. It's got great sharpness. Uh, Great colors, uh, subject separation. You know, we like to separate our subjects. Uh, pictures of you, I'm gonna show everybody here as well. Um, so what happened to Pentagon? Well, when, when uh, East and West Germany unified into Germany that we, that we know and love today, um, you know, it was the Pentagon was, um, was, deemed to be very inefficient. It was very bloated at like 6,000 workers, um, you know, within, within weeks after, after uh, unification, they laid off just about everybody ended up with like 262 workers or something like that. My memory serves me well. But um, anyway, then they just stopped production in 1991 and, and sold off, you know, the divisions I want you to get out there and sell, sell, sell. into uh, to private investors who still use the name Pentagon today, but just not what we remember it as. The Pentagon Six was the big was the big uh, f claim to fame thing. It was a medium format uh, camera, but um, anyway, this lens is is cool. It's an M42 mount, screw mount. Hey, screw you. Uh, so it's it's again it's. It adapts to everything, all, all the mirrorless cameras out there. Um, you know, I use the Sony uh, A7R2. Um, and, you know, again, click, it mounts, it screws, screws in. Of course, the adapters, the big portion of it, it's almost a quarter of the, the size on this camera. So it's a, a little big uh, for my Sony. Size does not matter. It's what you, what you know how to do with it. You know, again, I wouldn't want to be carrying this thing around all day, but for some purpose pictures, you know, photos that you're going to take, maybe uh, um, some portraits, I like take some take some pictures of Dylan here. You know, we like pictures of you, don't you? Yeah, he loves to see himself out there, you little diva, you. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be uh, showing you some pictures of him for sure. But the, the aperture ring is uh, preset, you know, back in the day, remember this is, uh, what, 1984, um, when this one was, was produced. You know, originally it was, like I said, a Meyer Optic Gerlitz uh, Orister, uh, but the Orister was 135, 3.5. So this one, uh, this one being a, a 2.8 is a faster lens. And um, uh, again, preset, is basically you lift the aperture ring and then you, let's say you want to, um, let's say you want to shoot at 5.6, which I'll, I'll do in a minute. Um, you would lift it and turn the aperture ring to 5.6. Did I do that right? Oh, okay, here we are, 5.6. And then you would open up your aperture wide, widest, Get your, get your um, focus and your light metering in there. And then you would stop down to 5.6 without having to, without having to uh, look at the lens. It would just stop automatically at 5.6. So you don't have to take your eye off, the, off the, uh, the subject. And of course, hopefully when you're photographing, you don't have a 22 month old pulling on your fingers and everything else while you're doing that. So stop touching me. Um, as I said, let me do my usual here and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, get you a, just a sample of, you know, I'm roughly two meters away. 
uh, from the camera that's that's uh, recording this video, which is my Canon M50. So the kit lens, which is a 15 to 45 EFM, what I normally do is I focus in on the uh, the lettering around the, the nameplate, and that's my that's my subject. So I take a picture of that and I crop in, and then I get you know another photo. We'll do it at 5.6 just to show you what that looks like. So let me do that now. Are you ready, Mister? He loves it when I count to three and he goes that. Ah! So, um, are you going to continue on with that trend? Something like that? <laughs> Looking at me like, what are you talking about? So, anyway, let me focus in as best I can at 2.8. Um, wow, it's almost like dead on right there. All right, so ready? One, two, three. Yeah, a little delayed reaction on that one. So that was at, at 2.8. Uh, and again, shift to 5.6. I don't even have because it's declicked as well. So you can't count clicks or anything. So the, the uh, um, preset works, works great in that regard. All right, let me make sure my focus hasn't shifted at all. And it uh, looks pretty clear right there. All right, are you ready again, mister? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was at 5.6. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, again, it's, 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 a, it's a cool lens. It's not something I would want to carry around with me every day. As I said, it's pretty heavy um, in that regard. So... Not something, not something I would recommend you, uh, you be hauling around with you all day. But uh, as I said, if you have some photo shoots, you know, you got that, you got that model out there on the beach doing her thing. Uh, get out there, take your shots, uh, and then put the lens away and put on something else. Uh, continue from there. But um, it's economical. I mean, this is, you know, where is this, what is this uh, YouTube channel? Modesty photography, right? You're pointing the wrong way up here. Yeah, modesty photography, where we're here, you know, to teach you tips and tricks about uh, photography, introduce you to vintage lenses, camera systems, you know, tips and tricks, techniques, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're kind of based on. Um, so I think that was pretty much uh, all I wanted to talk about with the uh, with this particular lens. So. How about we show you some uh, shots of Dylan? Want to see shots of Dylan? All right, so here's uh, Dylan at 2.8. Uh-huh. And how about some at 5.6? All right, so here's Dylan at 5.6. Uh huh. And how about some random stuff? People like to see stuff other than, other than Dylan. Don't tell him I said that. Um, so how about some random stuff that uh, we take photos of as well, just to show some cars and trees and flowers and beaches and mountains and fences and brick walls and whatever else we can find. So here's some random stuff. Okay, and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about with this particular lens. So, with that said, how about we do our little plug for our, well, now that I've 
<laughs> turn my screensaver off. Um, the software that I use to edit my photos is what? It's Luminar, right? Luminar. Luminar Neo and Luminar AI are what I use. Now, Luminar Neo is the latest release. Uh, it was a mix of AI and Luminar 4. Uh, it's got a lot of artificial intelligence and whatnot. We like artificial intelligence, right? As opposed to the real stuff. <laughs> no, he doesn't like artificial intelligence. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. So, <laughs> um, but it's economical. You know, it's only $79 for the Neo. Um, and it's yours for life. You download it, it's yours. Do whatever you want with it. Um, you know, they update it as, as things get released and whatnot. And, um, you know, it's, it's got its little quirks and everything. It, it's great as a plug-in for those who are like using uh, Lightroom and things like that. Uh, but I use it as a standalone. You know, it's because it's economical and because it, it's, it's kind of a one-stop shop for me. A couple slides here and there, I click, click, click there and there. The AI takes care of it and I'm done. You know, when I'm using Lightroom and stuff like that, I could sit with one photo for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Eh, that's too much, too much time to be spending on a single photo, right, mister? So I like to just get it done. So it's great for beginners, great for lazy people like me who want to hurry up and just get it done. And uh, uh, again, it's economical and it's yours for life. There are no subscriptions or anything else. Um, and you're also, if you, you know, purchase it, you're supporting you know, them, uh, the company who produces Luminar is Skylum and they're in the Ukraine. Uh, you know, you're not seeing this video until May, but I actually recorded it at the end of February. <laughs> it's February already, huh? Um, and, you know, Russia's just invaded Ukraine a few days ago. You don't know the power of the dark side. So things aren't looking good for them there, but... Um, I don't think, uh, you know, Russia's going to turn Ukraine into a big parking lot. So, you know, hopefully they'll let business and life go on after they've probably, you know, removed the president, which is, I think, what Putin has in mind. But anyway, yeah, enough of what's going on in the world. So how about you support our channel, right? And how do you support our channel? Well, you subscribe. Right? And oh, you're right-handed. He likes to subscribe. Uh-huh. And how about a double-handed one? Subscribe. Yeah, the more power, four-handed subscribe. That's right. And uh, YouTube likes other algorithms too, like the like button. And what is the like button? It's like a thumbs up, right? So we can show off the thumbs up girls. So, thumbs up. Uh-huh. All right. So that was the thumbs up girls. He's got the hots for the blonde one. I know he's always watching that one. He will watch the videos when we're editing. And um, so what else can we tell them? How about they stay safe out there, right? It's still a COVID world we're in. Stay safe. Remember, you belong here. That's right. And where do they belong? They belong at Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And man, you just farted again on my leg. A disgusting little man. Disgusting. Ew. So that was camera talk with Dr. Scott, take two. And Dylan, the little gas meister. Uh, so come on back next week. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the thumbs up. And if you love Dylan, send him some cookies. He's always asking for cookies. So um, that's probably why he's got a little belly like daddy. So come on back next week and we'll do this all again. So this was, again, Dr. Scott and Dylan. And we'll see you when we see you. All right, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Here I am.